almost uh, 2.30 in the morning here. And I just thought I'd put together or something. So basically nothing planned. But the idea here is to dabble in almost uh, every context and element in Houdini. So let's see what we come up with. It's basically a stream of thought uh, type work that I sometimes do and hopefully by the end of it we'll have something you know that makes sense. I'm gonna drop in a geo node. that's a given and uh, let's start with a bit of wax wrangling. Now don't be too um, intimidated uh, with programming if you're not familiar with it uh, I'm gonna write down a uh, small code and I'm gonna explain it as well so anyway uh, as uncommon as it is I'm gonna uh, the wrangle will be the first node over here um, I'm gonna create some basic uh, geometric uh, form or entity so that's why I'm gonna run it uh, on detail only once and uh, well let's see if we can add a couple of points so I'm gonna run I'm gonna say add point and uh, it's gonna be zero because I'm running it uh, on input one and what I want to do is specify a location for my point so let's say one zero zero bracket close that should give me a point over here and I want a point going over here as well so that's another point zero and this time one zero one will be the position vector and if I press this so I'm gonna have a point over here so we have these two points now what next well, let's make a line between them. So I'm going to say add vertex 1, 0, 0. Basically, I'm mapping a vertex on my first point. I think it's a double bracket. There you go. And also for the second point. I'm going to say one zero one. So we have vertices now as well. Um, let's uh, draw a line now. So I'm going to say add frame zero and the kind of uh, geometry that we want connecting these two points will be a polyline. Let's specify that and bingo, we have a line that connects these two points with the, the two vertices that we made and then we connected them with a poly line. Now, so let's uh, want uh, a few more points bit, uh, on this line that I made between these two points. So as usual, I think you should be familiar with it. I'm going to drop in a resample node like so and let's see how many points we have 11 so let's make it the length 0.05 so we have a few more points and what else i want to isolate uh, the points in the middle from the points on either end so i'm going to drop in a group swap I'll set it to run over points and not primitives and right now you can see that it's uh, selecting all the points now uh, what I can do here is uh, in the base group I can say 1 is to 19 so the first and the last point is not selected but uh, all the points in the middle are so with these points selected and they are now in this group one i want to add a bit of turbulence between that um, on them and uh, have them animated as well 
And I think the easiest way to do it is basically drop in a point warp. And so I'm gonna drop in a turbulent noise. That's nothing too difficult. Basically, turb add and then out. So I'm gonna add this and then I'm gonna pipe my position over here in the and then I'm gonna take the turbulized position and then add it with our normal position then I'm gonna write it out so you can see that it's the given this turbulence what else can we change over here hmm. so well, first of all I think we need to make it 3d noise and what I can also do is uh, let's amp up the uh, frequency a little bit like so that seems like it's making some sense and let's try a couple of different noises now that's shifted it into word position let's try original pearl and now that's too much let's try simplex oh yeah and that makes a bit more sense so let's uh, promote our offset since i'm going to be using this to animate to our noise and promoting it brings uh, the offset value out in the soft context uh, coming out uh, yeah moving this will offset the noise so I can just type in over here and I think it's moving a little too fast we can revisit it a bit later but still it's quite jaggy so what should i do hmm. i think i should convert it to nerves that's what i usually do <coughs> so i'm going to convert this into a nerves curve and that smoothed it out see the difference and after that i'm going to continue working on Poly, so I'm going to convert it back into polygons. So it should have a significantly higher count. Oh, by the way, uh, we isolated this group one separately. So, what I want to do here, since the first and the last point is now moving as well, I only want, uh, I want the first and the last point to stay in their position. So, I'm going to it to group one so this turbulence AWOP only runs on the points in the middle so you can see that the first and the last point are now fixed in position so we have this and we have this at this point I think I can drop in a null and say that hey at least we have our vein let's call this vein and let's give it a poly wire so that we have a bit more geometry to look at while we work but it's too thick obviously so first of all i think i'm going to give it a few more divisions yeah and what i can also do is uh, let's give it a thickness of 0 0.005 yeah seems decent now what shall we do i wanted to animate from right to left from side to side so what i can do is i can pipe in a carve node Yeah. And if I were to move it so, so you can see that it's basically making a stroke effect. But uh, as the same with this one, the second uh, U. 
is basically the uh, lead point and the end point that we can animate and uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do so I can say start with point one and let's offset it slightly so yeah one decimal place so I'm going to start it place a keyframe and mm, let's animate it over one second maybe two seconds 48 point zero one let's disable this for a while and what I want to do is I'm gonna take the parameter and paste a relative reference over here and I just need to offset this by 0.1 so let's see what do we have actually this should be 0 0.01 for it to work nope yeah now it's working sorry about that so if I were to play this you can see that it's moving out and if I were to set the template flag to my previous geometry you can see that it's tracing out like so um, on this function to cycle after that so I'm gonna shift click over here and I can that's gonna bring my animation editor and I can set it to well I can leave it as uh, Bezier and what I can also but what I can do is I can select these and where are you Added channel properties there it is my apologies so afterwards I'm gonna set it to cycle and I'm gonna hit apply and accept so going past 48 frames this is gonna continue to cycle this goes and it can, continues to come afterwards like so and you can see that this is all procedural so no matter your value you can see that there is a point one difference uh, between the first view and the second view now let's assign this uh, a different color by the way because I do use the color node to mark out uh, different attributes and different parts of geometry so let's set it to red there it goes what I want to do here is uh, I want uh, the slice that we have chopped off and the actual uh, you know this whole squiggly line I want the poly wire to be influenced by this the thickness of the poly bar so well, how am I going to do this? Let's see. I want to do an attribute transfer. So this is the this node. Uh, this input takes the attributes that you want to transfer from. So once we have that, I only want the CD. And what I can do over here, I can go over here and set my distance threshold to a rather small value so it's only transferring the color to a small value and I can soften it out by making it 0.2 that's a little too small but yeah anyway let's set it to 0.1 sorry 0.1 Hmm. and now what I can do over here is uh, basically I can tell this to I'm going to set this color to black I think I should set it to black yeah there you go um, I want to use the uh, color value to drive the thickness of this wire. 
So what I can do is uh, 0 0.05 will be the basic value. So that's going to be the thickness that's going to stay uh, no matter what. That will be your baseline value. But what I can also do is I can add, uh, let's say, if I were to say $CR. Okay, so that's inflated it by quite a lot. Don't want that. But what we do want, what we can do is uh, multiply the CR by 0 0.02. There you go. So that brought back to believable levels. Now you can see that there's this vein that's bulging and it's like constantly going through. Uh, it's still a bit thick. Let's try 0 0.01. Like so yeah makes sense what is happening is that that this strip that we took out previously and we assigned a color uh, and that color is being transferred to the whole the full line that we had this one and that uh, attribute is driving the thickness of this poly wire i hope i'm making sense it's quite an easy concept what else can we do now? I'm thinking of uh, some way that we can integrate dynamics over here as well, some sort of a particle system or a dynamics object of some sort. First things first, right now there are no velocity attributes, so what I can do is I can drop in a handy dandy trail sop and that allows us to compute the velocity. So if I were to turn on my point trails, it's going to give me a velocity as well. What I can also do is um, for particle emission, I can drop in a scatter. So we already have our color attribute, PD, and I can use that to source my particles. So basically, with the scatter sop, I'm going to say that uh, that particles should be mapped according to the density attribute, and we're going to specify our color information uh, to source of particles. So let's move it to the sides. That will take care of uh, our particle sourcing. And they're a bit too even, so I can turn off the relax iteration. I just like doing it. Yeah. Let's drop in a null on the side and say, let's call it PRT source. How many particles do we have? Some thousand, yeah. Now, uh, another issue that we're having basically it's either red or it's black so what i want to do is uh, come up with some sort of a median value so that even the parts that are absolutely black do not stay black so i'm going to use another wrangle and basically add uh, on the color values that we already have some more color values and how I'm going to do that is uh, I'm going to use an if condition. So we have uh, parts that are absolutely red and they sort of fade out. Sorry. And this part is what we want to focus on. So let's say if CDR is less than 0 0.1. Then I'm going to say set a point attribute that's suggesting me that on geometry stream zero and the attribute that you want to set is CD and I'm going to say at the current point so PT num and I'm going to uh, basically have a user control so I'm going to and Color information is, uh, I mean, color attribute is a vector, so it needs uh, a vector value. So I need to uh, create uh, a vector field. And I can do that is say, by saying CHV, that is channel vector. 
but I'm going to call it just CLR for color. And I'm going to say set. So it sets this. And it's okay. It's not mad at me. And it, if I click this, it's going to create the sphere parameters as well. So coming over here, this is the bit that we want to specify our colors on. So let's say 0.3. And there you go. Now it's blending out smoothly. And let's say 0.5 and 0 0.5. Yeah. So it has this nice pale red pink color. And you have this uh, bright red bulge going through it. So playing it, oh, I think it looks nice. All our attributes are talking to each other and that's something that I really like about Houdini. Is that how you start with uh, basically two points and then how we keep building upon it. And we gain more attributes like over here. And we specify a color and then use that color attribute to define the thickness and then we had to use the same attribute to define our polywire thickness and by the same thing we are uh, adding more color to other parts of the geometry and at the same time we are using it to work out our velocity uh, with the trail stops, we're getting three velocity vectors as well. And then we are scattering our source points, which is later on probably going to go into a dynamic simulation. Let's uh, work on our particle system. What I want to do is basically, I want to use this bulge to emit particles from the sides so that they sort of fall out and away. And what I also want to do, in fact, before we move on further, is right before I drop in my poly wire, I think I should uh, move it up. So it's easy. Um, that pretty much anywhere in your node tree, you can drop in your transform. And I think I should just move it up one unit in the y-axis. So it hovers a little bit above the ground. Uh, I think I'm going to set it to a light background for this one. Let's drop in a pop net. And we're going to be using this as our source. And let's jump inside. And for the source, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to first of all set it to points. And I'm going to say use parameter values. And then I'm going to refer this PRT source that we have. So go up one level. And it should be. Why is it not giving me a suggestion? Yeah. There you go. And just to make sure that it's working, let's drop in a gravity node over here. Yeah, it's working. Bingo. Do I real time playback on? Okay, yeah, I do. So, what else can we do? So, let's play with the. Right now, it's just emitting too many particles. I don't want 5,000 particles like at all. Let's set it to 80 maybe. That's more like it. And let's turn off the gravity, or at least let's not turn it off. Let's set it to a really low value, like minus one. Bingo. There we have it. Let's check out the velocity attributes as well. Already we were getting a velocity vector that we piped in from the trail stop uh, in the geometry land. I just want to add uh, some randomization to it. So I'm going to set it to add to inherited velocity and set it to 2. 
yeah i think it's flying out a little too much and we're gonna work with the pop force node and things like that so but let's set the variance to zero but i do want it to fly up a little bit so i can do a point three i think zero for now and let's see what we can do make it a bit more organic looking and have a, have it a bit more momentum i'm just gonna drop in a pop force i usually just like to go with the varying the amplitude and i'm gonna reduce the source size a little bit and set the turbulence there's a bit more small field turbulence like so and what else let's set it to 0.7 and coming back over here let's see what we have okay So yeah, let's bring it out outside. Let's merge this with our basic geometry, see what we have so far. Okay. Let's set the A so that these particles die off after a while life expectancy should be i don't know four 1.5 still make that right and what else so we're gonna work with the the particle scale that's gonna determine um the particles that will be instanced onto it by default the particle scale is either i mean it's usually one and that's always uh, almost always uh, the wrong p scale so what i usually do is just drop in another wrangle and i say at p scale equals 0 0.01 that's my baseline value that i start with i'm just going to cut this uh, for a while and let's instance uh, a geometry let's say a grid maybe and i'm gonna make it a small grid so say 0.1 and 0.1 for now i'm gonna give it four rows and four columns there it is let's set it back to dark basically on small particle instances and let's do a copy stamp i mean i could do copy to points but i don't know why i almost use the full fledged copy stamp with all these controls let's see what do we have okay so that's a bit too small i think particle scale is too small Going back up, if I were to set it to say 0 0.05, yeah, there we go. Now at least we're able to see it. And I don't know why are these old particles ghosting still. Maybe it's just a viewport error. Let's climb out. Let's merge in with our node, with our geometry. Right. Okay. First of all, I need to turn off 
this transform cumulative. And what I can also do is uh, basically align it with the velocity vector that we have. But uh, more than anything else, I want some variation in our p scale. So what I can do is uh, basically define two floats. Let's call it min. And let's make it a channel float. Call it min and another one called max and let's call it channel float max by the way uh if you have trouble following this uh just stick around i'm sure i'm going to be doing a summary later on once we're done with it so don't worry i'm gathering my thoughts as i go along so it's basically a stream of thought tutorial that I decided to do and this I wouldn't even call it a tutorial in a way but I think it should be a good exercise if you just want to get to know the basic uh, functionality of all aspects uh, of Houdini anyway and for p scale what I can do is I can instead of 0 0.05 I can specify a random value and fit it between these two vectors that we have so like between point 0.1 and point 0.3 what i can do here is say fit at according to age and min and max so what they're doing is they're starting out small and then they grow big if i were to make my max higher you can see that they're getting bigger but still when they start they start out small like so so between zero and one right at the emission point they're almost non-existent conversely speaking i can have them start big and then fade off to a small value as they grow old in age like so so they're disappearing I think it looks like a cool effect or so I think merged in with our geometry ah I don't know I think I'm gonna set it back to what it was point one and point three like so now what else can we do let's do something about uh, the rotation because right now they're like pointing out in odd directions and i want them to rotate so with this i can come in back into a copy stamp and i can say that hey i want this grid that's being rotated i want it to by the way set this back to geometry and also have it back i want this to rotate according to the velocity vector that is coming in from over here this thing and uh, basically use uh, our old a script commands because they should be fine and say dollar vx multiplied by 150 and dollar v by multiplied by 120 by the way, I don't know why I added these brackets over here. I don't need it. And let's just say dollar V Z multiplied by 150 as well. So now they are rotated. Actually, rotated randomly. You can see them changing their vectors as they travel down so add a bit more velo variable uh, variation in the z-axis yeah what else can we do so they're all uh, white and boring at this point I don't know let's give them a random color and again just another wrangle 
or you could drop in a color node uh, again i think i should show both i could say at colors brand at pt num and each of these grids these instance points is now going to have right now they're just free falling through the grid i think i'd want them to hit the ground and collide with it so what i can just do is come back over here drop in a merge and just oops sorry bring in our ground plane like so and i'm sure they're gonna collide as you can see over here but right now they're bouncing too violently so i'm just gonna set the bounce to zero and bounce forward to zero and the rest should work as it is but i'm just gonna hide this let's see it against the grid yeah so there is no bouncing going on come back and while we're at it uh, what else can we do i only want to see our pop data so just use this wild card so you're just going to see the pop object this bit and you can see it colliding with the ground but i most definitely do not like the way that they're standing after they're colliding hmm how can we fix this Okay, by the way, uh, while you're at it, uh, it's always a good idea. Now that I'm starting to wake up, is to name your nodes. Always do it. Set B scale. What was this one? Yeah. Assign random color. And what we can do is we can try flattening up the up vector of these particles, of these instances, basically. So that they when they fall the point they fall flat i can just drop in another uh, wrangle i think and try to work with the orient attribute so ideally what you'd want to do is by the time they're hitting the ground you'd want the orient to flatten up let's just say that if at uh v dot y velocity in the sorry let's shut it off because i clicked away before i finished it so that's why it... so what i want to do is uh say that if the velocity in the y-axis uh, is just before it becomes zero that is just before it uh, hits the ground when it's at that point what I wanted to do is uh, change the rotation so that it looks as if it's falling flat. So uh, we have our orient uh, attribute. So let's say at orient dot, uh, and it's a vector. So obviously you have these x, y, z uh, attributes that you can isolate and work on. I want it. I want this one to be one. And however, so while if uh, maybe lying flat but uh, the direction and rotation uh, horizontally should be random so what I can do is I can drop I can say orient y should be rand at pt num so that should be random and at orient uh, x and I think uh, yeah orient z along the z axis that should be one so it should be uh, pointing upwards but uh, y and x these can be random anything and if i were to okay did i what else did i do where is the okay i did not say less than what there you go so when it's less than 0.1 and i think this should cook as well and this should cook as well and this should be cooking as well bingo so let's see what do we have so when they fall you can see that uh, they are falling flat let's call it 
flatten rotation. However, I want to use the template as well so that uh, when they fall, they stop this flickering. Yeah, there you go. Oh, they're still flickering. What's wrong with that? So after a while, they start conking out. We might fix that later. And merging it over here. Anyway. So let's uh, review what we've done so far. So started out with uh, this geometry wrangle. Point wrangle actually we added a couple of points. Uh, this is saying that I start with uh, zero and set to detail so that it only run once. Whenever you're creating geometry that doesn't exist or basically doesn't have any backlog, you'd want to set it to detail attribute and on the detail attribute basically it's the most highest uh, you know encapsulation of the data that we have going on so it starts with the zero stream you have point over here and you have another point over here and then we cannot add a polyline uh, on the point themselves points and vertex as you might know are two different uh, things in houdini so we also need to add vertices on the points before we can add a primitive that is the polyline over here. Then we resampled it, added a few points. After that, what I did was, yeah, I isolated the starting and the end point. And then on the middle points that we isolated, I dropped in an attribute pop. And then I converted it into a NURB that smoothed it out. But then I converted the NURB back into a polygon. That's null, and this thing is what is giving her is giving this little section, and basically there is this uh, between the first and the second u. There is a point one difference, as you can see. It's like point four eight uh, and point three eight. And you can see the expression that I put over here. Basically, this is referencing this one, and then subtracting point one from it. After that, we assign a color to it. And we assign a color to our main whole line. And then we transfer our attributes, our color attribute, like so. And yeah, after that, I think I just moved it up because it was just too close to the ground. I was getting close to throwing this into our pop net. So I thought it might have, might be a good idea to have it move up and then throw particles down. Uh, should probably set it to light. There you go. Again, after that, we worked out our initial velocity by the trail stop, have it uh, compute velocity like so. And then I'm gonna scatter some, I scattered some points uh, with our color attribute as the density. And there we have it. So now we have this geometry ready to get piped into our pop net. Over here, what uh, I did was I added a bit more color to our absolutely black uh, polyline that uh, was over there previously. This one. So the set point attribute. So it's saying that uh, whenever the CDR is less than 0.1, wherever it is, and it's uh, for most of this line set a point attribute to stream zero and the point that we want to add is uh, cd that is the color attribute and we want to set it on every point so therefore at dt num and what color that we is uh, is it that we want to set uh, that is specified by this channel vector clr uh, or color as i said that i created and then i set it to set so that it sets in the value there are other modes as well like add as well so if you're like other previously existing values it would set that so it's set point attribute is i'll suggest that you look up the houdini help uh, documentation it goes into detail in that but anyway just uh, to get a gist of it i think it's uh, that's how it works and after clicking here we had our spare parameters and we specified 
the, our values over here so we have our base mesh over here then we went into our pop net and we piped our prt source over here over here set it to points and then we did our velocity and force uh, stuff over here added a gravity and set it to minus one not the standard gravity because then it would have just dragged whatever was being emitted and then we also added a ground collider what else did i do yeah i think the rest is pretty much stock i think i did play with the velocity attributes over here it's pretty self-explanatory and over here i popped in a couple of wrangles because the first thing that you would want to do right after you come out of the pop net is uh, set the p scale and the best way to set a p scale is uh, i mean for this situation if you want a bit more randomization is that you have you can create these two spare parameters these uh, variable float variables and then you can set the p scale according to the basically encapsulate it in a fit range and have it uh, change with age with the values map wrapped around the min and max that you can specify over here after that yeah we played with the, the orient vector so that uh, our copied geometry whenever it lands it flattens up and I have no idea why it is not stopping because it should actually but I'm sure if I find out why it's doing that I'm gonna leave it in comments and after that I assigned a random color according to points when I recopied our points uh, I did rotate uh, our grab our grid according to our velocity vector that was coming in from the pop net so this is what's happening over here turn off make sure to turn off transform cumulative make sure that you are uh, using the points uh, the point attributes that uh, are coming in from the pop net over here and also make sure that you stamp your inputs if you have like other spare inputs uh, inputs and also make sure to pack your geometry so that it doesn't have like too many extra vertices or points and yeah there we go and in the end we just merged her procedural work nothing too fancy but i think uh, it's literally i mean just spontaneous thinking that i did uh, as the notes came into my mind so there is it's not like that it's prepared or planned it too much in advance um I hope you found this uh, useful if there's like any questions or comments uh, constructive comments or criticism please do feel free to leave them below and i'll see if i can answer them all right thank you so much uh, catch you guys later thanks yesterday we had this uh, problem and that that uh, these particles uh, were landing but then they would uh, start flickering after a while like this and it's a very small fix uh, i'm not going to make it too technical or protracted uh, i should have thought of it uh, yesterday but i was sleepy not fully awake i guess so anyway i'm going to fix this and it's pretty simple so i think yesterday uh in our pop source uh in our attributes uh, what I did was uh, in the birth tab, I set the life expectancy to 4 and 1.25 as the life variance. So it's this life variance that's uh, messing things up, basically the whole age. Uh, when I said it, I did not, uh, if you recall, if you just rewind, I did not have this ground plane and I did not think of uh, colliding this, these particles to the ground. So I wanted them to die off after a while, but since they're stopping at this ground plane, I should take care of it. And it's pretty simple. I'll just simply suggest that uh, you set it to 100 and life variance to zero. And if I go back, play it again, 
and you can see that there is no flickering, no nothing going on. They're static and nice. 